Hi everyone, it's Professor Primden. In this video, we're going to talk about the quotient rule. So in the last video, we talked about the product rule and how to find the derivative of a product of two functions. In this video, we're going to talk about the quotient rule, which will allow us to find the derivative of a quotient of two functions. So derivatives of quotients. Just like there was a formula for the product rule, there's also a formula to how to find the derivative of a quotient of two functions. The derivative of the quotient of two functions is not the quotient of the derivatives of the two functions. In other words, you can't take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and then divide the two answers. There's a formula on how to find the derivative of the quotient of two functions. And this is called the quotient rule. Suppose that f of x and g of x are differentiable functions. So that means f prime of x and g prime of x exist. Where g of x cannot be zero, well that's because g of x is in the denominator. Then the derivative of the quotient of two functions is as follows. The derivative d dx of f of x in the numerator and g of x in the denominator is this formula. So you take the denominator, g of x, you multiply by the derivative of the numerator, so f prime of x. So remember, addition was for the product rule. The quotient rule has the subtraction. Then you take the numerator, f of x, and you multiply by the derivative of the denominator. And then you also have to divide the entire numerator by the denominator squared. In other words, the numerator of the derivative resembles the product rule, except it has a subtraction sign or a minus sign instead of an addition sign. And the minus sign goes with the derivative of g of x. In other words, the negative sign is in front of the g prime of x times f of x. Now, why is that important? Because subtraction, the order matters. If you take two things and you subtract in the opposite order, the answer will be the opposite sign. So you have g of x times f prime first, then you subtract f of x times g prime of x in that order. The denominator is simply the square of the original denominator. So that's why you get g of x, which was the original denominator, but then you square it. Now you might be thinking this is a very complicated formula just to find the derivative of a quotient. Well, if you name the top of the fraction high and the bottom of the fraction low, then the quotient rule becomes this. The derivative of high divided by low is low d high, so low is denominator, derivative of high, that's the derivative of the numerator, subtract high d low, so high is the numerator, derivative of low, so derivative of the, the denominator, divided by low low, or low squared. So this becomes low d high minus high d low all over low low, or low squared. So that gives you a way that you can remember the quotient rule. So let's look at example three. Finding derivatives of quotients. Find the derivatives of the following functions. Number one, f of x is x to the fourth plus four to the x, all divided by 3 plus 16x cubed in the denominator. So since this is a fraction of two different functions, you have x to the fourth plus 4x in the numerator, and 3 plus 16x cubed is a different function in the denominator, we definitely need to use the quotient rule to find its derivative. So f prime of x is low d high minus high d low all over low low, or low squared. So now just plug in to this formula. Low is the denominator, so 3 plus 16x cubed. d high is derivative, so d dx, of the numerator, x to the fourth plus four to the x power, subtract high d low, so high is the numerator, x to the fourth plus four to the x, unchanged, and then derivative d dx of low, so derivative of three plus 16 x cubed, all divided by denominator squared, which was three plus 16 x cubed, and then you square the whole thing. So we plugged into the quotient rule, but we actually haven't found the derivative yet. So we have a couple derivatives to find, we have the derivative of x to the fourth plus four to the x, and we also have the, the derivative of three plus 16 x cubed defined. So let's simplify. f prime of x is three plus 16 x cubed, which was the denominator times derivative of x to the fourth, use the power rule, that will give you four x cubed, plus the derivative of four to the x, that's an exponential function because the variable is x in the exponent. The derivative would be four to the x times natural log of the base, so natural log of four. So that entire answer is the derivative of high. Then subtract for the quotient rule. Then you have high unchanged. And then the derivative of low. The derivative of low would be the derivative of 3, which is 0. And the derivative of 16x cubed, use the power rule and the constant multiple property to get 48x squared. And then remember, the quotient rule, you have the denominator squared. So it's 3 plus 16x cubed, all squared in the denominator. And now again, just simplify. You have two terms here and then two terms here, so you have to use FOIL method to multiply that out. 
And then you have this 48x squared that needs to be distributed to both of these terms. And so after you combine like terms, you'll have f prime of x is this derivative, 12x cubed plus 16x to the sixth, so you'll combine the x to the sixth terms, plus 3 times natural log of 4 times 4 to the x power, plus 16x cubed times 4 to the x power times natural log of 4, then subtract 48x squared times 4 to the x power. Now don't forget, you also have all of this divided by the denominator squared. So the original denominator was 3 plus 16x cubed, and then you square the whole thing. So one important note is that you do not need to try to simplify the answer for the derivative after using the quotient rule. Simplifying the expressions depends on what you're going to be doing next. Since in this problem they asked us to find what is the derivative, well, we found the derivative. We used the quotient rule to help us set up what the derivative would look like. We found the derivative of high. We found the derivative of low. And so we could have stopped here. This is f prime of x. So this is the derivative of the original function. But we took a couple extra steps to simplify by distributing and using the FOIL method. You do not need to do that. It depends on what the question is asking. In this case, we were asked to find the derivative, and we did that. So number two, this time we're going to look at the function g of x is equal to, in the numerator, log base 3 of x, and then in the denominator you have 4 to the x power subtract 7. So notice that you have a fraction of two different functions. You have to use the quotient rule if you're going to find its derivative. So g prime of x is low d high minus high d low, all over low low or low squared if you're using the quotient rule. So now I'll just plug into this formula. You have low, which is the denominator, 4 to the x power subtract 7, in parentheses, because that's the entire denominator, times the derivative, so d dx, of the numerator. So the derivative of log base 3 of x, subtract the numerator unchanged, so log base 3 of x, times the derivative of the denominator. So derivative of 4 to the x power subtract 7. So that's what the quotient rule tells us, what the derivative will look like. Now we actually have to find its derivative. So we have the derivative of log base 3 of x defined and the derivative of 4 to the x minus 7 defined. So 4x minus 7, that's in parentheses because that's below, times the derivative of high. Well, log base 3 of x, that is not natural log of x, so the derivative is not just simply 1 over x. It's 1 over x, and then also in the denominator you have natural log of the base, which was 3. So natural log of 3 minus, because that's the quotient rule, log base 3 of x is unchanged, the derivative of 4 to the x we get in the previous problem, the derivative is 4 to the x times natural log of the base, so natural log of 4, and then the derivative of negative 7 is just 0, because it's just a constant. And then don't forget about the denominator when you're using the quotient rule. It's all divided by the original denominator squared, so 4 to the x power minus 7, in parentheses, all squared. And so, let's just do a little bit of simplifying. You have 4 to the x minus 7 times this fraction, so 4 to the x minus 7 times 1 would be in the numerator, so 4 to the x minus 7. The denominator is x times natural log of 3, and then all the other terms just stay the same. So 4 to the x times natural log of 4 times log base 3 of x, all divided by 4 to the x minus 7 quantity squared. So we don't have to simplify any further because they were asking us to find the derivative, and that is the derivative of g of x. All right, number three. This time the function is h of s is 2s cubed in the numerator, and the denominator is 1 minus s squared. Now notice, you can't simplify this function at all because there are two different terms in the denominator. You can only simplify if there was only one term in the denominator. And so, since this is a fraction of two different functions, you have to use the quotient rule to find its derivative. h prime of s, this time, is low d high minus high d low all over low squared, so the denominator is quantity, 1 minus s squared, times the derivative of the numerator, so d ds of 2s cubed, minus 2s cubed unchanged, times the derivative of the denominator, so derivative of 1 minus s squared, and then you divide by 1 minus s squared was the original denominator, but then you have to quantity square it. So again, we haven't found the derivative yet. We just set up what the derivative would look like using the quotient rule. So now we have to find the derivative of 2s cubed, and we have to find the derivative of 1 minus s squared. So 1 minus s squared is unchanged, that's the denominator, times the derivative of 2s cubed, well, the derivative is 6s squared, after using the power rule, minus 2s cubed, times the derivative of the denominator, which would be derivative 1 is 0, and the derivative of s squared is 2s, so negative 2s. And then, remember, keep the denominator, so 
divide by 1 minus s squared all to the second power. So this is the derivative. This is h prime of s. But if we were asked to simplify, we have to go a little bit further. So h prime of s would be, well, you have 6s squared that can be distributed through this set of parentheses, and then you also have these two that can be multiplied together, and then combine like terms, if there are any. So 6s squared times 1 is 6s squared. 6s squared times s squared gives you negative 6s to the fourth. And then you have these other two multiplied together. You have negative 2s cubed times negative 2s. That will be positive. 4s to the fourth power. And then again, divided by 1 minus s squared all to the second power. And then combine like terms. There are a couple terms that have s to the fourth. Negative 6s to the fourth plus 4s to the fourth. That's negative 2s to the fourth. And then the other term is 6s squared. All divided by 1 minus s squared all to the second power. So this answer is simplified completely because there are no other like terms in the numerator. But notice the numerator has a common factor of negative 2s squared. So if you factor out a negative 2s squared, you'll have an s squared left from the first term, and you'll have a minus 3 from the second term. So you can also have the derivative written this way. h prime of s is negative 2s squared times, in parentheses, s squared minus 3, and then keep the denominator as is, divided by 1 minus s squared all to the second power. Okay, let's try one more. Number 4. This time the function is k of t is 2t minus 10, that's the numerator. The denominator is 3 times e to the t power, subtract 4. So again, you have a fraction of two different functions, you have to use a quotient rule. So k prime of t is low d high minus high d low, all over low low, or low squared. You take low, which is 3 times e to the t power, subtract 4, in parentheses, because that's the entire denominator, times the derivative of the numerator, so d dt of 2t minus 10 minus the quantity 2t minus 10, that's the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator. So derivative of 3e to the t minus 4, all divided by the denominator squared. So 3e to the t minus 4 in parentheses squared. So now find the derivatives. You have the derivative of 2t minus 10 to find, and the derivative of 3e to the t power minus 4. So derivative of 2t minus 10 is just 2 for 2t, and the derivative of 10 is 0, so you have 2 plus 0, times the denominator, 3e to the t minus 4, minus, for quotient rule, between the two terms. Then you have 2t minus 10, that's the numerator. Derivative of low would be derivative of 3e to the t. Well, that's an exponential function with base e, so the derivative is exactly the same, 3e to the t. And then derivative of negative 4 is 0. So 3 times e to the t plus 0 times 2t minus 10. All divided by the quantity 3e to the t minus 4 all squared. And so this answer is the derivative. We found the derivative of the function after we used the quotient rule and found the derivative of high and low. But if you were asked to simplify, you have to go a little bit further. So you have 2 times each of these terms, 3e to the t minus 4. And you also have 3e to the t that can be distributed to both of these terms, 2t and negative 10. So after you distribute the 2 through the parentheses, you'll have 2 times 3e to the t, that's 6e to the t. 2 times negative 4 gives you negative 8. Then you have 3e to the t times negative 2t, so that's negative 6te to the t power. And then you have the opposite of negative 10, so that's positive 10, times 3e to the t, that's 30e to the t power, all divided by... 3e to the t minus 4, quantity squared. And so the reason why we're simplifying is that there are like terms in the numerator. There are 6e to the t and 30e to the t power. So you have 36e to the t powers all together. So negative 6t e to the t, 36e to the t minus 8. So that's the numerator. And then again, keep the denominator exactly the same. 3e to the t minus 4, quantity squared. So that's the derivative of k of t. So now that we've talked about the quotient rule, let's actually see how the quotient rule can be used in an application. Example four, the concentration of a dissolving chemical. Suppose a large tank contains eight kilograms of a chemical that's dissolved in 50 liters of water. If a tap is opened and water is added to the tank at a rate of five liters per minute, at what rate is the concentration of the chemical in the tank changing after four minutes? So notice that they're asking us about a rate of change in the concentration of the chemical in the tank. So 
So we need to find the derivative, but we don't have a function in the problem that's stated. So we need to first find a function that gives the concentration of the chemical in the tank as a function of time. So how can we find this function that's given us the concentration? Well, think of the concentration as the amount of the chemical that's in this tank of water. So the concentration is going to be a function of time because the concentration is changing since we have this tap of water turned on. And so it's dissolving the chemical in the tank. So the concentration of the chemical is eight, always eight kilograms. The amount of water is changing though. So the denominator will be, you have 50 liters of water originally, and then you're adding five liters for every minute. So this will be 5t because it's changing based on how much time has passed. 50 plus 5t is the amount of water after t minutes. So now that we have the function for the concentration of the chemical in the water, we have c of t, we can now find the derivative of c of t using the quotient rule because this is a fraction of two different functions. Again, you cannot simplify this function because there are two terms in the denominator. So if we take the derivative, we can use the quotient rule. C prime of t is low d high minus high d low all over low low. So take the denominator, 50 plus 5t in parentheses, times the derivative of high, which is derivative of 8, minus high, which is 8, times the derivative, so d dt, of the denominator. So derivative of 50 plus 5t. And then again, don't forget about the denominator. It's all divided by 50 plus 5t all squared. And so we have a couple derivatives to find. The derivative of 8, well, that's just the derivative of a constant, that's 0. So 50 plus 5t is low, times the derivative of top, or the high, is 0, minus 8, times the derivative of low. The derivative of low would be, the derivative of 50 is 0, and the derivative of 5t is 5. So you'll have 0 plus 5. And so if you simplify the derivative, you'll have 0 times 50, that's 0. 0 times 5t, that's 0. So this entire first term just cancels out. And then the second term just becomes negative 8 times 5, that's negative 40 in the numerator. And the denominator is the same, 50 plus 5t in parentheses, all squared. And so what is the change in the concentration of the chemical in the tank after 4 minutes? You plug in 4 into the derivative to find that the rate of change. So after 4 minutes, c prime of 4 would be negative 40 in the numerator, divided by 50 plus 5 times 4 for the amount of minutes that have passed of turning the tap on, all squared in the denominator, negative 40 in the numerator, and you'll have 50 plus 20 inside the parentheses, that's all squared, so 70 squared gives you 4,900. So the rate of change would be negative 40 divided by 4,900, or if you approximate this, it'll be negative 0.00816. And now the units. The units for the concentration was kilograms of the chemical per liter of water. So now we're talking about a rate of change, how much does the chemical concentration change per minute? It's kilograms per liter per minute. All right, one more thing to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about higher order derivatives. If the function of y equals f of x is differentiable, that means that you can find its derivative. This derivative is f prime of x. It's also a function, though. So f prime of x is using function notation, so it's a function itself. If f prime of x is also differentiable. In other words, if you can find the derivative of the derivative function, then you can also differentiate it, and you can find out a new function. Well, that new function is called f double prime of x. In other words, f double prime of x is the derivative of the derivative. So it's a function, and it's called the second derivative of the original function. So f double prime is the second derivative of f of x. So likewise, the second derivative is also a function. So if the second derivative also has a derivative, then you can find the derivative of the second derivative, and that gives you the third derivative. So the third derivative is denoted as f triple prime, or f prime 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 of x, and it's the third derivative of the original function. So you find it by taking the derivative of the second derivative. And so this notation continues indefinitely, as you would imagine. The nth derivative is denoted this way. You have f and then a superscript in parentheses n of x. That denotes the nth derivative of the original function f of x where the variable is x. And n is how many times you are taking the derivative. You use the prime notation for the first, second, and third derivatives. Starting with the fourth derivative, then you start using this notation where you actually write the number n as a superscript of how many derivatives you want to take. 
So to get an idea of how higher order derivatives work, we're going to do example five. Derivatives of all orders. Find the derivatives of all orders for the polynomial function. f of x is negative two times x to the fifth. Subtract four x to the fourth power plus seven x cubed plus two x squared. Subtract four x, subtract one. So this is a polynomial function where the degree is five. We're gonna find the derivatives of all orders. The first derivative, this is f prime of x. That is the derivative of the original function, one time. So it's the derivative of the original polynomial. So we use the power rule, the sum and difference rule, and the constant multiple rule to find its derivative. So the derivative of the first term would be negative 10 x to the fourth. The derivative of the next term would be negative 16 x cubed using the power rule. The derivative of the third term would be 21 x squared. The derivative of negative four x is negative four, and the derivative of negative one is zero. But notice that this f prime of x, it's a polynomial. So you can find the derivative of it too. So let's take another derivative. The second derivative is denoted as f double prime of x. It's the derivative of the derivative. So you take the derivative of the previous answer, which was the first derivative. And now when you do that, you take the derivative of each term separately using the sum and difference rule, and also use the power rule and the constant multiple property. So the derivative of negative 10 x to the fourth will give you negative 40 x cubed. The derivative of negative 16 x cubed is negative 48 x squared. Derivative of 21 x squared is 42 x. The derivative of four x is four, and the derivative of negative four is zero. So this gives you the derivative of the derivative, or the second derivative of f of x. Now again, imagine that this process continues indefinitely. Then you have the third derivative. The third derivative is f triple prime of x. It's the derivative of the second derivative. So take the derivative of the last answer and use the same rules as before. The derivative of negative 40 x cubed is negative 120 x squared. Derivative of negative 48 x squared is negative 96 x. And then derivative of 42 x is 42. And the derivative of four is zero. So now you have the derivative of the derivative of the derivative or third derivative. Now notice what's happening. We started off with a polynomial of degree five we took the derivative and we got a polynomial of degree four. Then we took a second derivative and got a polynomial of degree three. And in the third derivative, we had a, a polynomial of degree two. So it looks like the degrees decreasing by one each time because we're using the power rule. So eventually we're going to get smaller and smaller degrees on the polynomial. So fourth derivative, this is where the new notation is used. So F, instead of writing four primes, you write parentheses with a four in it for a fourth derivative of X. It's the derivative of the third derivative. So take the derivative of the last answer again. Derivative of negative 120 x squared is negative 240 x. The derivative of negative 96 x is negative 96. And the derivative of 42 is zero. So now this is a polynomial of degree one. So now I'll take one more derivative. You have the fifth derivative. So that's f with a little five in the superscript in parentheses of x. That's the derivative of the fourth derivative. So take the derivative of the last answer again. And the derivative of negative 240x is negative 240. The derivative of negative 96 is zero. So it looks like we found all the derivatives. So that's what it's called by derivatives of all orders. We found the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth derivatives. And now the next derivative would be zero because the derivative of negative 240 is a derivative of a constant, which is zero. And so we found the derivatives of all orders for this polynomial function f of x. So this finishes our video on the quotient rule and also higher order derivatives. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about a review of composition of functions.